So if some of the people listening today are rule book kind of people, they can read about prohibited transactions in the Internal Revenue Tax Code. How fun does that sound? Oh, awesome. <laughs> but if you want to, it's IRC, Internal Revenue Code 4975. Uh, you can go ahead and read that. It talks about, but I'm just going to distill it in about like one minute. So people can be disallowed to your IRA, your ascendants and descendants, right? Your parents and grandparents and their spouse, you and your spouse, children, grandchildren, their spouses disallowed. A 50-50 business partner is disallowed. And a fiduciary, like your realtor or uh, your CPA, a fiduciary, your, your attorney could be disallowed. All right. So there you go. That's who can play the game. So your IRA can buy a note, but it can't be um, it can't be a note that was made to say, for example, your spouse, a disallowed person. No. And so you just have to, it's keep away, it's arm's length from these people, you know? So that's one so, thing to consider, no personal benefit. One thing I learned too over the years, and I didn't know this a couple of years ago, yeah. was that any deal that I'm 50-50 with an individual, not related to, immediately becomes a non-qualified participant, right? Exactly so right. me 50. and Nathan are in a deal 50-50, I can't use my stuff directed money to invest in something with him. You guys, it, 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 if you have a company and you're 50, 50 business partners, then you're disallowed to each other. But right. if, it, but if you're, but if that's not the case and you say, Hey, I want to get in this deal, Nathan, you want to go 50, 50 with me. That's different. But if you already have incorporated as 50, 50 business partners, then you're disallowed to each other. What if I did a deal with Nathan privately and then I wanted my IRA money to do another deal with him. Could I do that? Are you 50, 50? Well, I'll tell you what, there is, uh, uh, there is yes, is the answer. Okay. Because there's an exception that you can, so, as long as you fund concurrently, you can do deals with disallowed parties. And remember, everyone, check with your attorney on everything, please, right? Yeah. Um, so we have a bunch of people commenting in here. Uh, Cindy said hi, Robin said hi, um, and I know Bruce said hi as well. So I'm glad you're in here. Throughout the time, I'm going to stay low in my voice. Um, feel free to ask questions and I'll forward them to Nathan to ask. Yeah. Okay. Can you share a little bit about um, what are the benefits of using self-directed money? Yeah, I mean, the main benefit is that you can compound your earnings faster. Don't we love that? And the reason you can is because when you have earnings and it could be, you know, could be from a liquidity event, could be from just monthly cash flow, whatever, that um, income <coughs> is not diminished by tax. So any kind of retirement account is tax deferred or in a Roth tax free. So you get to, so all the money that your IRA earns can go back out into the next deal. A hundred percent of it. It's not, there are a couple of exceptions. There is this like two taxes where IRA can be taxed, uh, but that's, you know, go, kind of going into the weeds, but for the most part, yes, that's how it works. You compound faster. Oh, well, that's great. And then uh, you mentioned earlier, we said, you know, as a Canadian, I can't have an IRA of my own. However, I can use other people's IRAs uh, right. to go and invest. And I do that all the time. People use their IRA money to invest with me so that we can go both make money together, which is fantastic. It, it's so smart. You know, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that there's a $39 trillion pool of retirement funds. Hmm that invest that that people like you who are you know asset sponsors can tap into for your deals. Mm -hmm. And so your qualifying question for that would be to say, hey, do you have an IRA mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. Or do you have a, like a previous employer plan, like something from your old employer? A lot of people do and they just haven't rolled it over yet. And so then they can take that money and invest with you. So I think this really became apparent around 2008, 2009 is when we really had a boom in our industry. It's when I opened the company, you direct, but it's because banks weren't lending, you know? And so people, investors are like, where do I find the money to, for my deals? Where do I find, you know, where's this money going to come from? It's not the bank. They won't even give me any money. And so the realization that there is this huge pool of retirement money that may or may not be doing very well on the stock market. Let's move that over into alternative assets and help them do that help those people to build their retirement um, using alternative assets. So baby boomers could, if they had a bunch of money sitting in their 401ks and they retired and they want to control their money, they could move the money over, right? Yeah, sometimes when you're 59 and a half and you have a 401k, you automatically can do what's called an in-service transfer. That's true. But, um, but I mean, you could be 25 and change jobs and have a 401k, you could roll it over. So 
it's not really about your age. It's more about, you know, where's, if you've got the retirement capital to, to make, you know, to really do something. It's like, you're not going to, you're not going to invest in a note typically for 10,000, right? It's, it's, it's usually going to be a bigger deal. So you just have to put that money away. And of course we have um, contribution caps. So it takes a little while to build a retirement account up to the size where you want to, uh, you know, invest in it, you know, in, in a note or, or sometimes you have to be an accredited investor, right? You know, to do a deal, to do a note deal, because notes are security. So sometimes you have to be, uh, you have to be, um, you yeah, know, right, exactly. You have to be accredited. Yeah. And that's for my fund, it, it's only accredited investors. However, the, so the money that uh, somebody has in their IRA, that would count towards their net worth. Is that right? You know, uh, I believe it does, but you want to ask your tax person. Just sure. there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, right. so it's, it doesn't count your house, though. I know that's for sure. No, not your primary residence, but uh, but it seems to me like your savings, you know, savings right. account kind of. Uh, yeah, that should certainly. Yes, be counted. And your other assets, right? Yes, that you have exactly. That word. Yeah. And and I think we'll be seeing the SEC getting a little stronger on that accredited thing. I mean, I think being accredited sort of means that if you lost the money, you could still you know feed your family. Yeah. And they just don't, because these deals uh, can be risky. So you really need to, of course, understand the risk. Unless it's secured by real estate and it's by done by somebody who's been doing this for years and years. Hey, you know, there's there you Unless that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and there's risk in any investing, but without risk, Absolutely. there's no reward. So yeah. Yeah. I think investors are, are people that are looking for, you know, to take risks and make yeah. investments. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a question here. This is a great question. Um, Yvonne is saying, uh, I guess she's got her IRAs with Fidelity. She says, Fidelity won't let me have a self-directed IRA. They said that it's self-directed in the stocks that I choose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So they kind of jumped on the self-directed bandwagon saying you can mm -hmm. choose any stock you want, but mm -hmm. a truly self-directed IRA, that's what we provide at Udirect IRA services, you know, one that where you can invest outside of the stock market. So if, if Yvonne wanted to, move, you know, transfer her Fidelity IRA to you direct to a self-directed IRA. That's a pretty simple process. We do that, every, you know, many times a day. What is the difference between you guys and a Fidelity kind of? It's well, think of this like the typical IRA versus a self-directed IRA is because an IRA is an IRA. It's just mm -hmm. the same rules. But the difference between self-directed and a typical IRA is is like what assets you can put in this IRA bucket. Right. So for somebody who's working at Fidelity, they have licenses like maybe a six or 63 or seven or something like this. And they're not allowed to deal in the real estate environment. Mm. But so now we've got the alternative asset pool. And so that's different. So, so they end up being two different things. Same rules for IRAs. Mm. It's still an IRA, but a self-directed IRA is a bucket for alternative assets. And your company is designed for that alternative assets versus, and they could take it and put in stocks if they want to, but you guys have the availability to do anything that's exactly. legally bound. Right, right. Well, we have the ability to help them invest outside the stock market. That's what we're all about outside the stock market. Can you give advice on not what you should buy, but what yeah. things you can't buy? So if someone's yes. about to make a bad transaction at illegal, yeah. can you advise them, hey, listen, you can't go out and buy cars with us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, people think they can. Um, so, right, yes, we do. We offer a free consultation for anybody that wants to talk to us. And say someone is already an account holder, their account is open, it's funded, they found an asset they want to invest. Well, we're going to review those investment documents mm -hmm. and we're going to look and see hey, wait a minute, it looks like this you and the seller have, have the same name, the same last name. Are you related? Are you disallowed to each other? You know, we're looking for things like that. Um, you know, and so there are times when we're able to catch things, but the responsibility not to commit a prohibited transaction is always on the investor, uh, the IRA holder, because it's self-directed. You know, it's, it's sort of like when you go buy a house. I mean, when you go to closing, closing doesn't tell you if it's a good or bad deal. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you how to write it off on your tax return. They're just going to help you complete that transaction so that now you own that house, right, Nathan? I don't think it matters where you're at. That's no, how exactly. it works. Yeah, yeah, they didn't exactly. tell you, okay, well, here's how you, you know, take your tax benefits. Yeah. That's not, that's not their thing. And we're like that. We're administrative and we help you, uh, you know, get it to the right place. But we definitely want to talk to our account holders and any, you know, anybody that's got a transaction yeah. that says, hey, is this, is this prohibited? Can you do Roth and traditional with your company? 
Yeah, traditional. And what is the difference? Yeah, well, the, the difference is a tax treatment. So Roth IRAs are the only kind of IRA that can be tax-free for life. That's pretty mm. sweet. 